Welcome to Journey with the Jays NFL Sunday edition. Spencer, Jake, John, and JB here. We're going to be joined by Jeff Cadillac, NFL analyst. You can find him on www.jeffcadillac.com, and you can also find him on Twitter at Jeff Cadillac and the number one. Guys, I want to get started today with the Atlanta Falcons game. They will be hosting the Detroit Lions. The spread is Atlanta minus two and a half. So once again, the Falcons are the favorite coming off the win last week against Minnesota. Uh, I picked against them last week. I'm going to pick against them this week. I, I don't know why, but something about the Lions tells me that this is like, you know, two of the worst teams in the NFC going up against each other. The Falcons already fired their head coach. The Lions are on the precipice of firing theirs. I think that Stafford has a good game. I think that um, we, we we saw a lot out of DeAndre Swift, the rookie running back from Georgia last week. He had a phenomenal game. I like the Lions to beat the Falcons. I think we saw a little bit of fool's gold last week with Atlanta. I don't think that you know what the score was is indicative of, of who the Atlanta Falcons are. Julio showed up. He had a great game. Um, and, and they beat a Minnesota team that's been struggling. But I, I don't know why. Something tells me the Lions are going to win this game. JB, tell me I'm wrong or, or do you agree with me? Completely wrong. The The Falcons got it going last week. The defense showed up. They showed heart. Something they didn't show the first four weeks. Julio Jones is back. He's healthy. Now you got Julio Ed Ridley. The offense looked potent. The only one on the show last week that told you, watch the Falcons. Minnesota, Minnesota was done. Guess what? They got Detroit this week. What does Detroit do? Detroit likes to lose close games. Atlanta's going to win by at least four. Take it to the bank. John? Yeah, so my lock of the week, um, I think this is a layup. No, John, we want to talk no. about the Falcons first. Oh, we're just talking about the Falcons. Okay, my bad. <laughs> All right, so the Falcons, uh, yeah, you're, I think you're right, JB. I'm going to jump on the train with you because you are right last week. Um it's an easy game. The Lions aren't a good team. Neither are the Falcons, but the Falcons are the more talented team offensively. And I think it'll be a shootout. And anytime there's a shootout, the Lions can tend to wither away. I bet against the Falcons last week. I'm not making that mistake again. I learned my lesson. JB, you put it very well. And I, I 110% agree with everything you said. Julio looked awesome. Him and Matt Ryan showed why they're you know so fun to watch together. Him, uh, you know, Julio and Calvin Ridley are, are a fun dynamic duo. Uh, I, I love the Falcons, you know, the, this week especially. Lines have been very, very poor. Uh, their head coach, Matt Patricia, is definitely on his way out. Falcons seem to be hopefully maybe turning this ship around. I'm not saying they're going to be good, but they're playing better, at least now that Dan Quinn is finally out. I'm picking the Falcons, and I'm picking them to cover, taking that two-and-a-half spread. I'm putting – JB, just like you said, I'm taking that to the bank. I'm 100% with you on that one. I'm taking the Falcons this week. I would just like to point out that the Lions did beat the Jaguars in Jacksonville. Not that impressive, but they put up 34 points. And I just I just don't want to forget about Kenny Galladay. He's one of the best receivers in the league. He did not play for the Lions the first three or four weeks of the season. He's back. That offense looks good. They have a decent uh, two two man running game with Adrian Peterson and and, and Swift, the, the running back from Georgia. I mentioned. I would not sleep on the the Lions, and and I'm the only one picking them this week. And I think I'm going to be correct. The fourth best receiver if he played for Atlanta, and you know when it comes down to it, the Lions the Lions find ways to lose games they should win. This is Atlanta coming home this week and taking care of business. Um, but, you know, switch it, switch it over to my game of the week. Uh, I went 3-1 last week. I only lost on the Ravens. We kind of gave up at the end. They were they knew they were going to win, so they weren't worried about the spread. And when you gamble, you bet with the spread. So even if you pick the winner, it doesn't mean much unless you cover your points. Uh, so this week, you know, I, I, I'm going to go with the 49ers. They're traveling east to play New England, who looked horrible last week when they were um, – when they host, hosted Denver, that their offense wasn't in sync all day. They just didn't look right. The defense played well. And, you know, against San Francisco, it's going to be a low-score game. I don't see much happening. Both have really good defenses. But when it's all said and done, you know, if the offense wasn't able to score against Denver, how are they going to score against San Francisco? So, I, to me, I have San Francisco covering here. 
Um, coming east, they got the 425 start, which is good for them, so they don't have to worry about the body clock. Yes, the long flight will be tough, but they have the good start time. John, what do you think on that? Yeah, as far as that game, um, I, I think you're right. I think the Niners can definitely cover that one. The Patriots have not looked good recently, um, and I think they get upended by the Niners here. I think the Niners end up um, covering. Ironically, this is going to end up being one of my other picks uh, for this week, one of my few locks for the week. I am going to disagree with you both, and I am taking the Pats 100%. Bill Belichick does not like to lose, and we all know that. I do not like – there are two people you should not bet against, and I learned about one of them last week. One of them is Tom Brady. You do not bet against Tom Brady, and I learned the painful truth on that one last week. The other guy you don't bet against in the NFL almost ever is Bill Belichick. And I am not learning that lesson this week. I am learning before the week happens to know don't bet against Bill Belichick, especially after a loss. I I think this is going to be an inspired team. Belichick is going to be – I mean, he's going to be coming down on this team. This is a team that should be in the race for the division title, especially with Cam Newton. They probably feel that way at least. And they're behind the Dolphins, which is not something that Belichick or anybody on that squad is really going to feel like – should be happening. I, I feel like they're going to come out inspired this week. They're going to come out and they're going to they're going to they're going to show us you know who the Patriots really really are, and they're going to come out and win. What do you think, Spencer? Yeah, I, I agree with you, and I appreciate you giving me credit for for giving <laughs> you that that Tom Brady rule. Uh, you don't bet against Tom Brady the week after a loss, and you don't bet against Bill Belichick the week after a loss. I was just trying to find it on Google. I couldn't find the statistic, um, but basically you're absolutely right. Belichick does not lose after a loss. And let's talk about why New England was so bad against Denver last week. Cam Newton was on the COVID-19 list for like four or five days before the game. I think he got off the list th three days before the game. So he did not have time to practice. He didn't get time. He didn't have time to get acquainted with the offense. Uh, and it was a it was a short week for him. I think you give you give him a full week of preparation, a full week of practice. They're going to come out and, and they're going to they're going to do what they did against Seattle, and they're going to do what they they did in the games they won. I I, I just I I think like I said with Atlanta, I think what the 49ers showed us last week was a little bit of fool's gold against the Rams. I don't think they're that good. Um, I do think it's going to be low scoring, but I think the Patriots will cover the two and a half at home. Yeah, I mean, when, it, when it's all said and done, I mean, I know you're not supposed to bet, bet against Belichick, you know, after a loss, but they, they have no receivers. The The running game looked awful. Denver's defense is not as good as San Francisco's defense. Not that Denver has a bad defense. They have one of the better defenses in the league. I think this is another one you take into the bank. I thought it was a, a pretty horrible slate of games as I was looking through, uh, especially early in the week that we're recording. It wasn't much I was excited about when I look at my picks. Last week, the games kind of shot out at me. I would I would have had a great day if I didn't try and parlay things and the Ravens went to bed, bed early. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Now, Spencer, you were 2-2 two and two last week. What do you have this week? Yeah, so I was 2-2. Two and two. I won on the Cardinals, and I can't remember the other team. I lost on the Vikings, and I can't remember the, third, the fourth game. So... This week, my lock of the week is the Seahawks, minus three and a half against uh, the Cardinals in Arizona. Coming off a bye, uh, the Seahawks have looked like the best team in football. As you guys pointed out, even in the, the Cardinals' 38-10 um, to 10 win against the Cowboys, their offense does look flawed. Kyler Murray is not uh, superb right now with throwing the ball. They, they've been able to get by on their stellar run game. Uh, and 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 Murray on the ground, but I just I don't think that they're gonna run all over Seattle. I think that Seattle's run defense is is okay without looking at the numbers. And I just I just think that uh, Murray's not gonna be able to match Russell Wilson through the air. I can see the Seahawks winning this game 35 to 20 uh, score like that. But but I like Seattle minus three and a half uh, against the Cardinals. That's my lock of the week. What about you, Jake? Well, I don't think it's gonna be that high of a score. You know that that big of a a a, a, um, a difference, but I do agree. Seahawks, absolutely. I we we were just talking earlier, and I said Russell Wilson has not gotten the respect he deserves. I understand that everybody knows he's great, and I understand that he's won his Super Bowl, and that's all well and good. Russell Wilson has never received a single MVP vote, and I'm starting to feel like with the way this season's going, 
he is out to hopefully get that respect that he so absolutely deserves to finally say, excuse me, where's my respect? Where, where's my, I'm not asking for a, an MVP award. I'm asking for a vote. Just one, just one. Uh, I've been getting that feeling all season with how he's played. He's played exceptionally well. Um, Kyler Murray is good. Don't get me wrong. But I really agree with what you said, Spencer. They didn't impress me last week at all. The score is not reflective of really how they played. Again, we talked about this earlier. I believe we said Kyler Murray had like nine completed passes last week. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and that's against an, a putrid uh, defense for the Cowboys. That was pathetic. I mean, that, that defense is horrible. To only have nine completed passes is just uninspiring. And so I, I can't possibly bet against Russell Wilson, especially with the way Kyler Murray has looked. I, I'm taking the Seahawks, absolutely. And I agree, I, they will definitely cover the spread. John? So as of recording this, the Seahawks are currently favored by three and a half, which means they're only favored by half a point because they're given that three points being at home. So they're favored by half a point. The Seahawks typically play super close games when they're at home. Uh, you typically see it come down to the wire, so with the Vikings – and um, and the Patriots came down to the wire. So that half point being at three and a half, and they play them close games, and it being a division game, I really don't like to see. I don't like the Seahawks here. I really don't. I like the Cardinals to um, to cover that. Whether whether it's a three point game, two point game, I don't like that half point that they tacked on to the end. I really don't like that. That scares me away from betting on the Seahawks. I'd prefer to bet on the Cardinals with that half point as of right now. Did did you say that uh, Seattle's home because they're away in this I, game? Oh, are they away? I thought they were home in this one. I thought I'd read their home, but anyway, they they always play close games. Anyway, they for some reason they play to whatever competition they're on, and it's kind of like a Seahawks thing to do. They play whoever they're facing. They play to that competition. I think this is going to come down to the wire. They typically do when they play the Cardinals. It typically comes down to the wire ends up being like a field goal. Um, if you remember that game years years ago, it was 0-0. I believe it was a Monday night game between the two. It was a 0-0 game going into the fourth quarter. It ended up being a uh, field goal that cho- decided the game. So uh, I don't like that half point that they tacked on to the end. I, that scares me if I'm betting you know, some money on this one. Yeah, I mean, being Tuesday, the lines may change. Um, you know, right now it's the three and a half. Listen, I like Arizona as a young team, but Seattle is a Super Bowl contender. And if they're going to make it to the Super Bowl, these are games that they have to come out and they have to win. They got to go on the road and they got to take care of business. You know, Arizona's coming off a Monday night game against Dallas where both teams looked horrible, even though uh, Arizona got a 38 to 10 win. They didn't look good. They didn't look crisp on offense. The defense looked better than I've seen them in a long time. But right now, you know, I, I'm going Seattle with this to half a point. If if you're gambling, I, I try, you know, buy down a point if you could. Uh, if you're just picking games, I go with Seattle all the way. The other the other two games, the ones I couldn't remember, I won on the Bears over Panthers. I lost on the Rams against the Niners. Jake, who is your lock of the week? Easy lock of the week for me. Um, it, it's going to be a real fun game to watch. This week, I'm not wearing any jerseys like I was last week. Remember, that's watching uh, at home on a video. But I like the Steelers and the Titans, and I'm taking the Titans. I, I know this is probably going to surprise some people because that's an upset. And I say, oh, it's easy. That Titans offense, now I understand the Steelers defense is really good, but Derrick Henry has been insane. He has looked fantastic um, in the past few weeks. And th- that offense seems to be really clicking. And I just. I get a feeling that they're going to continue to keep doing what they do. Mike Rabel's a really smart head coach, and I feel like we saw that last week. Um, I believe in an interview he was asked, I believe he took an intentional penalty uh, for too many men on the field to actually stop the clock. And for me, that's just something that I love is Rabel is such a smart head coach, and he he, he goes beyond the the little things. He really does – the, the, the things you don't see often, especially things like that, he really understands the games and the nuances. Um, I, I, I love, again, I love him as a coach. And Derrick Henry, like I said, he has been unbelievable. I think A.J. Brown's going to have another nice game. He's been, since coming back from injury, he's looked really good. Um, it, it, this is a fun team. And with the way they're running the ball, I, I'm not – 
I'm not scared by the Steelers' defense in terms of run stopping. Um, they haven't been incredible. They've been, they've been okay. Um, in, in their few games, they've let up um, multiple um, decent rushing games. Uh, they've had uh, one game against Denver. They had over 100 yards. Against the Eagles, they let up nearly 100 yards. Last week against Cleveland, in an absolute beatdown, they still let up 75 yards. And for Derrick Henry, who is just a big man and a absolute force on the field, he's been playing really well. I, I feel like he's going to get the job done. Um, and, and I don't, I, I'm not, again, it's it's they're favored by two, the Steelers. So if I'm if I'm betting, uh, I'm I'm actually taking the Titans to um, to cover this week. Again, it's it's only a two point favorite, mainly because um, the Steelers are at home, I believe. I, I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I believe they are at home, and if that's so, that means the Steelers are giving three. If you're and if you're betting, that's uh, excuse me, the Titans are at home, so the Titans are giving three. So really, the Steelers, even though they're considered technically favored higher, again, I, I'm because they're at home and you're lucky they're giving three. That's why I would take if you're taking the Titans. That's why I would take them to cover. Spencer, what do you think? Uh, real quick, Pittsburgh has allowed the second least uh, amount of rush yards per game in the league. Uh, Seattle, who I picked in my game, they've allowed the seventh least rush yards in the game. So Pittsburgh does have a stout running defense. Um, who do I like in this game? It's a toss up for me. I, I, I don't know who to pick. I would probably lean on Pittsburgh because I think Roethlisberger is better than Tannehill, but not by much. JB, what do you think? You know, it's going to be probably the game of the week. There's not much else out there that I'm really excited about. San Francisco and New England, which is uh, the game I went over. Not really excited about it. This game, I'm excited to watch. Um, you know, I, I really gonna have to go with the Titans. Watching them play last week, they they look hungry. They look like they they tasted it last year and they want it this year. And that you know, Pittsburgh, they're good, but the Titans look hungry. Like they want to be fed and they want to get there. I don't think they're gonna, but I think they're gonna win this week and I think they're gonna cover. And you don't want to be you know on that that side of the buzz. So, John, what do you think? Yeah, I think that the Steelers have been due a loss, um, and I think this is the one where the Titans wind up covering and ultimately winning this one. Uh, Steelers got got away with a couple a uh, couple wins the past couple weeks, not this past week, but um, other games against the Broncos and teams like that. They ended up squeaking out uh, wins like that. So I think that they're due a loss, and here in Tennessee, I think the Titans are going to hand it to them, and uh, the Steelers will end up getting their first loss. So the Titans will cover this one. Jake, real quick, did you say your record? I did not. You're right. Uh, I was, I guess it was that disappointing. I didn't feel like talking about it. Um, one and three. I only got the Chiefs this this past week. They managed to cover a, a, on was it Monday afternoon? Strange thing to say, Monday afternoon. Um, I lost on Falcons. I know I lost because I picked the Vikings. Um, you lost on Rodgers. Yeah, Rodgers got absolutely clobbered by Brady. That was a Terrible nightmare. Uh, and you remember? Uh, oh, I had the Cowboys, and that was also bad. I was hoping for an upset. I was just hoping for a miracle, and that did not work either. John, what do you got this week? Well, I I'll just start off. I went zero and four last week, so I don't got a name who I lost lost to when it comes to my uh, my picking my teams because I lost all of my picks. Uh, for this week, I have the Rams as my lock of the week against the Bears on Monday Night Football. Um, this one's an easy one. I feel like this is a layup. What do you got a Khalil Mack jersey on? He's got a there Khalil go. Mack jersey on. All right, but five and you a half. Are. The Rams are just high powered. I know the, the Bears have a good defense, but Rams have that five and a half points. That's easy um, to win by at least six. That's not hard to cover that. Uh, when you're uh, a way better team, the Rams are definitely a better team. They're a team that can get to the Super Bowl, as um, Spencer had mentioned earlier. And, and the Bears just – they're not that good. They have, they play good defense, but with Nick Foles and company, they really can't score many points. And again, Sean McVay's offense, which is going to put up points on Monday night football. They, they do uh, do well in prime time. Typically. I think that they run away with this one. It's, it's not going to be much of a game and Aaron Donald, but let's not forget about Aaron Donald, what he's going to do to Nick Foles. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm completely opposite with you here, John, uh, Leo Mack and the defense are going to step up. They're going to, you know, and I love the Rams. I think that they're going to the Super Bowl under the NFC right now. But 
The Bears are going to step up and play a tough defensive game. Their offense is going to do just enough to keep it close. They're not going to win. I'm not calling like I did last week for an outright win with the, the Falcons. I'm not getting crazy here. I'm just taking the points, and I'm taking the money to the bank again as they lose by three this week. But I'm on the other side of you. Spencer? I'm going to have to agree with you, JB. I, I, I Nick Foles is a gamer. He's proved that in his limited play in Chicago. He's a gamer. Their defense is stout. Montgomery is a good running back. And I just don't think the Rams – are as dominant as I want them to be. And they kind of showed that this last week. Uh, There there are a few chinks in in their armor, a few problems with their offense that I think they have to get straightened out. Um, I kind of agree with JB's, with with your analysis, JB. I I like the Rams to win this game, but I like the Bears to cover the the five and a half. I have to agree with John. Um, I, I've been a little bit disappointed with the Rams. They haven't been as great every week, but in general, that's a really strong offense that I, I really enjoy watching. Um, I, I've said it multiple times, and I'm going to continue to keep saying it. They are starting to return to form to what they felt like they, you know, to, to what they were in 2018 when they re- when they reached the Super Bowl. They were really good. I'm not saying they're as good, but they definitely do look pretty good. Um, and so for me, I, I have to go with them. Uh, what's the line on that? Uh, what, I, I, what's it? Uh, bears are the what, Rams are favored point? by five and a half. Who are the Rams, Rams are favored by five and a half currently. I'm not going to take that. I think that's, I, I, I'm not saying that the Rams are going to kill them. I just think it's, I do think it's going to be a close game. I think the Rams are going to take it that five. I'm, I'm not comfortable with it. So I, I would not take that if I were, if I were betting, um, but I would take the Rams if you're, if you're just picking a team. Um, real quickly, we would want to go over our picks real quick, all our other picks, guys. So, yeah. all right, for this, I'll, I'll start, I guess. So, this week, I got the Falcons, like I mentioned before, I mentioned the Pats, so I'm taking them. So, I'm taking both of those teams to cover. And my last team, other than the Titans, which I already mentioned, I'm taking the Chargers to cover. Um, that's their favorite by eight. I'm actually going to take them to cover this week. Um, I, I, I just I like Justin Herbert, I think he's really been a, a lot of fun to watch. And for me, I, against a um, not so great Jags team. I think they're going to cover. John? Yeah, for mine, uh, obviously I talked about the Rams and Falcons. The Jags, I like the Jags at seven and a half. Uh, Jags can put up points. And the Chargers tend to blow games. And I think this will be a close game. And that half point tackle into that seven, I think the Jags uh, cover a little bit there. And then the Raiders, two and a half. I actually, uh, the Raiders are obviously the underdogs. I see the Raiders ended up winning this game. I think uh, Tampa Bay comes back down to earth a little bit here on Sunday Night Football, and I think the Raiders win it and ultimately uh, cover that. Spencer, what do you got? I got, so as I mentioned uh, earlier, I have the Seahawks minus 3.5 uh, against the Cardinals, the Lions minus 2.5 against the Falcons. I'm sorry, the Lions plus 2.5 against the Falcons. I like the Dallas Cowboys minus one against the Washington football team. I think as awful as the Cowboys are, they're better than the Washington football team. I, I mean, I, I think that's that's pretty easy. And then uh, the Green Bay Packers are minus three and a half against the Texans coming off a loss. I, I think that uh, we, we just kind of – the media and, and, and everyone who watches football just kind of threw the Packers aside for a second. I think they're going to come back in a big way. I, I think you don't lose like that if you're Aaron Rodgers and, and and not come back with a massive game the following week. So I like the Packers to cover the three-and-a-half points against the Texans as well as the Cowboys to cover the point against the Washington football team. So I have the Falcons minus two-and-a-half. They're going to go two-and-four this week. Cleveland taking care of Cincinnati pretty easily minus three. San Francisco coming east at 425, and the Patriots losing a couple in a row, which never happens. And on Monday night, we got the Bears covering, but unfortunately losing to the Rams. Take your points and, and take your money, because those I'm going 4 for 4 this week to go 7-1. But now what we've all been waiting for, we got our uh, NFL analyst Jeff Cadillac coming on. We're going to have him on in just a second. Jeff, welcome. Hey, thank you, guys. Glad to be here. So what do you have going on this week? Tell us. All right. I've been listening to you guys for the last uh, 25 minutes and everything. Uh, I definitely uh, like what I hear so far. I'll go right into the games. I know I don't have that much time. So I'll start off with the Detroit uh, Detroit Lions at the Atlanta Falcons. I know Detroit's getting two and a half, but I have to disagree with some of you guys because I like Detroit in this game. 
I like them for a couple of reasons. Atlanta has the 31st total defense in the league. Detroit has the 21st total difference in uh, total defense in the league. I think this game is going to be a shootout, but the Atlanta secondary is com- is terrible beyond means. I mean, Raheem Morris is a defensive guy. I know he was with Tampa Bay, but the Atlanta defense, they've had eight sacks in six games, five interceptions in, the, in their six games, three in the last game against Minnesota. So they really had two interceptions in the first five games. I see this game being a shootout, but when it comes down to a shootout, I like Detroit plus the points at Atlanta. The, one of the other games I like that you guys mentioned is Pittsburgh at Tennessee. But I'll tell you this, I like Pittsburgh in this game because Tennessee, believe it or not, their defense at times is, is, is you know, it gives up, they give up a lot of yardage, they give up a lot of points. They're also, they've had seven sacks in six games. Pittsburgh on the other side, they've had 24 sacks and eight interceptions in, in, in their, uh, in their games. And it's like Pittsburgh's defense, they have a secondary, they come up and they make a lot of tackles. I like the Pittsburgh secondary uh, better than I like the Tennessee secondary. I see, uh, you know, a lot more weapons on offense for Pittsburgh than Tennessee has because the secondary for Pittsburgh is going to come up and stop Derrick Henry. He's not running for 263 yards against this team. So I like Pittsburgh at Tennessee, lay the two points. Another game I'm also looking at is Green Bay at Houston. Houston's at home getting three and a half points. Houston, you know, they they went toe-to-toe with Tennessee last week. They scored 36 points. That's why I like Pittsburgh against Tennessee. But Green Bay on the bounce back against Houston. I mean, you know, you got Houston has the 32nd rushing defense. It's just, you know, Green Bay, when you have Rodgers on a bounce back, I mean, okay, you know, they started out well against Tampa Bay. Then he got shell-shocked after that uh, pick six that he threw. I was as disappointed as you guys in that game. I kind of like Green Bay coming into Tampa Bay and taking charge. And at the beginning of the game, they really did. One of the other games I'm looking at is the Jags at the uh, uh, Chargers. Now, uh, you guys also mentioned about the Jags getting seven and a half. But I got to tell you, I like the Chargers coming off the bye because I like Justin Bear. This guy is playing like a veteran, not a rookie. He to- he went toe to toe in the Superdome against New Orleans and took him to overtime. Well, how much? What what kind of you know game do you think he's going to have against the Jags, who bas- who are basically you know trying to pl- outplay the Jets for the number one pick? The Jags are terrible. They give up uh, a lot of yards on the on the ground. They they're just n- not a motivated team. They traded players away. I, I see the Jags' offense as being pathetic. They, they're lucky if they run for 50 yards a game. The Chargers are due for a blowout win, and this is the game that they're going to get it because the Jaguars are just terrible on both sides of the ball, and Justin Hebert is playing like a seasoned veteran out there. He's not making mistakes like Daniel Jones of the Giants make, I can tell you that. And, uh, you know, those are the four games that I like. Um, if you guys uh, are looking for more detailed analysis of these games and all the games, you can always check my website for free, jeffcadillac.com. And I also have my best bet of the week, week on Twitter at jeffcadillac1. Definitely. And I, I retweet his best uh, bet of the week every week. So make sure you follow my Twitter, jb underscore the program. You'll see Jeff's pick and follow Jeff on Twitter. This has been Journey with the Jays Sunday edition. It was a pleasure being out here with you guys. Check us out Tuesday for a more detailed, expanded show. We'll see you next week. Have a great weekend, guys.